Velkommen til en særudgave af Brøndby Lyd, som man kan høre både som podcast, men også se som video på øh, YouTube. Det er øh, noget nyt, vi, øh, vi prøver af lige her for tiden, også at både udgive som lyd og video, så giv gerne noget feedback på, om det overhovedet giver mening, eller om I bare foretrækker at lytte, ligesom I plejer. Nu øh, skal I nyde, at jeg taler dansk, fordi lige om lidt, så vil jeg slå over i engelsk, men det bliver på dansk, at jeg kommer til at præsentere vores hovedpartner Arbejdernes Landsbank, og vores partner Glostrup Shopping Center og vores partner storedrenge.dk. Det er takket være vores partner, at vi kan levere så meget indhold, som vi gør om Brøndby IF. Så tak til dem, og støt dem, som støtter os. Og nu kommer jeg til at slå over i engelsk, fordi nu skal vi tale med uh, Joe Bell, direkte fra Portugal. Welcome to this uh, virtual studio, Joe. Thank you. Yeah, I maybe understood 1% of that Danish, so uh, I've got a long way to go. <laughs> Yeah, did you did you learn some Norwegian in your time in uh, in Norway? Yeah, I, I picked up on a little bit just from spending time with the teammates and you know, definitely understood the football terms more than the general life speaking. Um but I think it it was a little bit of a, a regret of mine. I think this time round I'm going to try learn a bit of Danish. I've heard it's very hard. Uh but I'm going to give it a go anyway. You, you just heard me uh, speaking in, in uh, Danish. You have to learn that potato thing in the throat. Okay, That's I what haven't we heard hear. that yet. We we hear from foreigners that it it sounds like we speak with a potato in the throat. Okay, okay. There we go. I'm already starting my lessons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe, uh, first of all, uh, how has it been to to become a part of this uh, this Brumby team? You you joined them uh, directly on the on the training camp. Yeah, look, it's been fantastic. It's obviously, uh, you know, been a bit of a whirlwind the past few days and, you know, especially the last week. But I think it's just such an honor to be a part of this club. And it's been so great meeting the team in Portugal and kind of beginning the understanding of, you know, how we play and the connections between teammates. Uh, so, yeah, it's been a crazy few days, but really exciting. On the deadline day in January, uh, we were sending a live uh, <laughs> live TV show until midnight, and it was uh, quite the drama to, okay. <laughs> to follow from the outside. How how did you experience it from being on the inside? Yeah, uh, yeah, drama. That's probably a good word for it. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, to be honest, the best way to describe it, it was just crazy. You know, obviously a lot of decisions being made and a lot of thoughts and thinking things through and telephone calls. And I was actually in uh, Abu Dhabi with the national team uh, and we were scheduled to play a game the next day. And it's a bit of a time difference. So it's about 2 a.m., you know, and things were still going on. So, yeah, it was Not a bit hectic. preparation for, for a national game. No, I would say to the fans that that's not normally how I would prepare for a game. So they don't have to be worried about that. Um But look, just so happy with the result, and as I said before, it's just an honor to be a part of the club. So, you know, really happy with how it ended. I spoke to uh, the the sporting director Carsten uh, V. Jensen earlier this week, and he told me that actually when when Bramby was scouting Henrik Hekheim, uh already there, they they had their eyes on uh, on you. Um, when did you first learn of the interest from Bramby? Yeah, look, to be honest, it was uh, the morning of the deadline day. Uh, you know, at least personally, how I approach the, you know, whenever there's rumors of transfers and things like that, I, I'm only interested if things are, are looking promising and looking more concrete. I think that enables me to just stay focused on the football and the job that I have to do. Uh, so yeah, that kind of resulted in, you know, learning about it mainly on that last day. Um, but yeah, but, you know, I think with any transfer clubs try to keep tabs on a player for quite a while making sure that it's the right fit um and yeah i think it's going to be a great work can you take us through what thoughts you were uh, doing uh from your first heard of the interest from Brumby um until you you signed the deal yeah uh i mean a lot a lot of thoughts went through my head uh obviously i knew a lot about Brumby even before even when I was living in New Zealand so I think you know that when a club like that comes knocking on the door I think that carries a lot of weight um of course I'd had many conversations with Henrik since his time moving in the summer uh so I think that was really useful having a little bit of insight into the club and you know how the team played a little bit so it it really helped with uh you know making that that final decision um 
Um, but as I said before, I think Bromby is such a, such a fantastic club, such a prestigious club with such rich, rich history. And, you know, everything I'd seen and, and heard from Henrik was ticking all the boxes for me. So, yeah, it was just uh, an honor to, you know, have the offer and the offer to work out. Um, just excited to be here now. You you said you already from from New Zealand knew about Bromby. How? That's, uh, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, we we keep track of uh, the world football even down there. Um, but of course, I mean, in in the Superliga, uh, Bromby is is of course one of the biggest teams. Uh, in the Danish Superliga, is a you know it's a big league in world football. Of course, there's the top five, but it you know it sits just below, and you know many players have have made the big steps into the top five leagues from the Superliga. Um, in New Zealand, we actually have a player uh, called Winston Reid who spent, you know, 10, 10 or so years at West Ham. But prior to that move, he played at Michelin. Uh, yeah. And of course, I know maybe this <laughs> it's not Bronby, but, uh, you know, he's one of the biggest players uh, and kind of a legend of the New Zealand football. So, of course, the country is very aware of the league and, and the teams that play in it. Yeah. How uh, how growing up in in New Zealand? Um, how do you um, how was it for you to 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 be a, a football player? And when did you find out that you wanted to do this? Uh, like, if you could for a living? Yeah. Um, look, I don't think there was a specific time in my life when I was like, okay, I'm going to become a professional. Um, I think it's just the sport that I love, uh, and since a young age, I've always been playing it. Uh, there's actually only one professional team in New Zealand, uh, so I was a part of their their academy setup from quite a young age, uh, and kind of worked through the steps there before making the move over to America to go to college, and then Norway, and then Denmark. Um, so no, there wasn't a, a specific time, but you know, it was a sport that I loved, and maybe I figured out I was okay at it when I was a little bit younger, and yeah, here I am now. Yeah, and you you went to to college in the US. Was that because of uh, you know was the pri- priority mainly the studies, or was it because of the the football? Because um, you you could play yeah. as well. Yeah, I think it's a it was a little bit uh, unnatural from a stereotypical football standpoint to go to America. But yeah, f- for me from a young age, the academics was important. Um, and I don't think you can ever know when you're 15, 16 years old how things are going to work out. So you need a plan B. Um, and for me, the American system gave me a chance to kind of maintain a good level of football while also keeping my academics ticking over. Um, so at the time it, it was the right move. And, um, then you ended up in uh, Norway after the, the coach that he scouted you at a, at a tournament. Um, what was the, what was the first uh, time in Norway like for you? It must've been quite a change of, of scene. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely quite a cultural shock coming from America, um, but it was it was good. I think the I think I suit the Scandinavian lifestyle if I can say that, and you know I found the the team extremely welcoming, um, which I think is the same from what I've experienced from the past few days here as well. Um, so I think you know making the change from Norway to Denmark is definitely going to be easier than when I first came from the states into Norway. Mm. Can you try and describe your development in uh, in Viking Stavanger uh, from from because when when I talk to to other journalists now they they're like you were one of the best midfielders in in the Norwegian league uh, mm-hmm. in the last season. Uh, so okay. so how how did you develop through your time there? Yeah. Okay. That's nice to hear. Uh, no, I think it was it was a good couple of years. I had you know. I was very lucky to have very good teammates, um, but also two coaches, the the one that scouted me and the assistant coach, uh, who who actually were both head coaches for my final year there. Um, and they were fantastic for me. They put a lot of trust into me. Uh, they worked with me a lot, you know, in the preseason and also during the season to try and improve my game uh, every time. Uh, so I don't think without them, I would have had the same development that I had. Um, so, you know, i think it's a lot of credit to them and the work they put in and when you combine that with the work that I wanted to do and the things that I wanted to achieve then of course you get a sense of growth um so you know but it doesn't stop there for me I hope to continue that growth and I obviously want to be you know one of the best midfielders in the superliga uh so you know that's the goal for me um and I know there's many steps to get there but it's a work in progress 
And Joe, also when I talked to, to also when you read what the uh, Viking Stavanger fans wrote um, about this transfer, they were quite surprised that you didn't go to uh, like a top five league in in Europe. Um, has there been any interest from from like other clubs than than Brumby? As I said, like the way I kind of approach the stuff is just focusing on when things are you know most promising and concrete. Um, so no, no, not from uh, you know teams from the top five yet. Uh, obviously, there's there's still a level of growth that I need to do to to reach that level, and you know I'm well aware of that. Uh, I think like. With football, there's there's no way to take shortcuts. Uh, it's all about the foundation of who you are as a player and and working your way up the ladder. Um, you know, and I think the step into the Superliga uh, is perfect for me. It's in my opinion, it's the final step, as I said, before the top five leagues. Um, so I think, you know, working here and and working with the team and the coaches and you know developing more uh, then opens the door in the future for for teams that these fans are describing is it also like uh the the danish club ha has made a history this recent years of selling very many players from from the danish league to the top five leagues um so was that important also when when making a choice about this that you could see the career path yeah definitely i mean you can speak on uh yeah Uh, as you said, the many players that have have made those steps in the past, um, and I think it's it's any dream of of a young player to you know continue working the way up. Uh, so yes, I would say that was a you know definitely factored into the decision. Um, you know, right now it's just about trying to settle in and and enjoy the time, and it's such an exciting period to be a part of Bromby. So I don't want to look too far into the future. Uh, but of course, I have dreams of playing in the top five leagues, and you know, seeing players do that before at Bromby uh, is always reassuring. It, it gives you a sense that you know the club's got things right in terms of developing young players, playing young players, uh, allowing them to showcase themselves, and then move on. So, yeah, I would say it played a part in the decision. Yeah, and I know you also talked to I think it was uh, the the club uh, channel about this, but your choice of uh, of number six. Um, are you specifically uh, a number six, or could you also play like you had number eight in <laughs> in Viking? Um, so, how do you see yourself and your skills in in the midfield? Sorry, I cut out a little bit. Are you referring to what position? Yeah, exactly. Are you like do yeah. you see yourself as a defensive midfielder or more like a box to box uh, midfield? Yeah, yeah. I mean. Uh... Look, I'm always open to anything on the best way that I can contribute to the team. Um, from a personal standpoint, I've been playing, yeah, the number six position in a in a four three three uh, mainly. Uh, so it's just a single six, and I do the same for the national team. Um, so I think there's definitely a sense of comfort there. Uh, personally, I think it's my most natural position that probably plays on the best strengths that I have. Um, but as I said before, I think you know you really just want to do the best for the team and contribute whichever way you can. And, you know, if at Bromby that's playing a little bit more as a an eight slash six, which is a bit more box to box, then, you know, that's the case. And, you know, I want to adapt and, and learn as fast as I can to be the best uh, eight slash six I can be if that's what the team needs. Yeah, because we have also Josip Radosevic, um, who can play, who plays mainly the number six and also did it... Um, Uh, uh, earlier in this uh, season, um, what have you seen from him? Is he? How do you see him and and like the other midfielders? Sorry, is the connection? Sorry, right? the <laughs> Portuguese. Yeah, the, the Portuguese connection isn't doing us very well. Could you go one more time? Yeah, because we also have uh, Josip Bradosevic in the squad, and he mainly plays the numbers. Yeah. Uh, now you tried play the. Uh, Play to play it together with him uh, yesterday. Could you see um, mm -hmm. yourself in a midfield like with him? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, again, I've only been here for a few days, and I've only played yet yeah, 30 minutes yesterday. But looks like a fantastic player and one that's very comfortable on the ball. With you know, setting up with the forward passes yesterday, setting up the second goal. So 
yeah, I think it would be fantastic to play in the midfield with someone with that much talent. Um, of course, that will be up to Niels to decide how he, you know, best sees the team, whether that is two sixes and one ten. Nice. Um, I don't think that's that's up to me. I just try to do my best in in the training and in these practice games to, you know, showcase what I can contribute. Um, but as you you know, as you said about him, I think he's uh, he's fantastic and he's been playing the six role. So yeah, that's football, and you you need to understand and adapt to to who your teammates are. Um, so I'm really trying to make the most of this period to, you know, understand him and specifically the midfielders, uh, to kind of, yeah, I think the more you develop that understanding, the better for the team in general. How, um, how has, uh, sorry, my, just, my connection is uh, <laughs> a little bit okay. better as well. Um, yeah. How, how did you experience the, um, the 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 first minutes for Bromby yesterday because as, as I saw it, I just saw a player who were like give me the ball all the time. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you say that. I I definitely like having the ball at my feet, um, and I think that suits the way that we're trying to play. Obviously, with the ball and and aggressive in the press as well. Um, but yeah, really enjoyable. Uh, you know, it, it's always weird playing those first minutes with new two mates and. Luckily, I had maybe Henrik, but I was a little bit far away from him to to have any connection. Uh, but yeah, it was good, and you know, I'm glad we won the game against a team that I've played many times before. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it kind of refers back to what I was saying before. I think it's just trying to understand the team and the system as fast as I can. Um, and you know, I think even though I played 30 minutes, and even though Valeringa had 10 men uh, when I was on. It was, you know, there's many questions and many things that I could take from that game. Uh, so I think that's that's what's so great about having, you know, these preseason opportunities. Yeah, um, the Brumby fans went mental on the internet uh, yesterday because uh, the club put up a clip of uh, you uh, swinging in across for Sigurd Roster <laughs> in, in, in the goal. We have not scored that many uh, goals from set pieces. Is that a right. one of your qualities, like to to um, take free kicks and corner kicks and stuff like that? I mean, yeah, I think so. Uh, I think from the dead ball, I try to work on that a lot. Uh, I think it kind of, it's not that I'm specifically good at dead ball situations. It's just I try to work hard on my passing. Uh, in terms of that specific goal, I think it maybe was a better header than my pass. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I've already spent some time getting to know Sigurd and, You know he's a great guy, so that was cool that we could we could have that. Um, but yeah, you know I'm I'm aware of the. I don't think it's set piece struggles. I think it's an opportunity for us to to work on and develop and maybe turn into one of our strengths. Um, but it is yes, I often take them for my previous club and also for the New Zealand team. Uh, so hopefully I can you know put in summer like that and Siggy can score some more goals like that. Yeah, there was. Uh, all of you players were cheering a lot after the goal. What, what was it? Some <laughs> kind of competition you had going there? Yeah, we, we were having a little team competition, so we spent a bit of time setting up some uh, some set plays and see who could score the most. And yeah, we won, which is good. Okay, the, um, Joe. Uh, many Brumby fans were actually uh, quite keen to watch the game again uh, between New Zealand and Uzbekistan, but it got cancelled due to COVID. Yeah. Uh, so uh, CV told me that you live in a single room. Yeah, yeah. So that was, that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think it was because, uh, yeah. So we had many COVID outbreak uh, cases in our team. Uh, that's why we had to cancel the game, as you said, oh. against Uzbekistan. So, yeah, it was. It made the thing even crazier because then I was rushing over here to Portugal, and you know, I had to get a test before I could interact with the team. So you know how the times are with the COVID stuff. It's better safe than sorry. Uh, So yeah, in the single room. So better not fall asleep too long, or else I might miss a team meeting, and that wouldn't go very good. <laughs> um, but uh, but how have you fallen in with the with the rest of the of the guys? Yeah, I think really well, and you know, as I said before, that it's just so welcoming the environment, uh, and you can already oh sorry, I can already see that you know even after a few days that it's a really tight knit group, uh, and there's quite a family feel within the club. Uh, not just from the players, but also the coaching staff. So I think that's a you know really inviting team to be a part of. Uh, and of course, there's many steps to go in terms of understanding and developing. But 
you know, I think I'm already building connections with the team and the coaches that I wanted to make. And, you know, that's the benefit of being here with the team now in preseason. And in 14 days, you could get your official uh, debut for Brumby. Um, have you been on YouTube yet to watch uh, the fans? I have been. On, <laughs> I have seen them uh, and I've seen them before I signed and I've seen, uh, sorry, heard the stories from Henrik. Um, and I'm just, yeah, so excited to see it with my own eyes. Um, clearly the best fans are in Denmark and, you know, maybe, maybe it's biased, but you could go as far as saying that, you know, some of the best supporters in the world. Uh, so I think, you know, being a player with, in a team with so much support, you can't ask for much more. Uh, so yeah, very excited having a few dreams about stepping out on the pitch for the first time and, and seeing it with my own eyes. What did Henrik uh, tell you about uh, the atmosphere? Because I talked to him once and all the time he played in Viking, it was like COVID. Uh, so he never tried yeah. to have many spectators before. Yeah, true. Uh, I think his maybe exact words were, bro, it's incredible. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's been great having him here and being able to talk to him. Uh, he showed me the video of, uh, I think there's a specific uh when the team's warming up, the fans will shout a player's name and yes. then he'll come over and do that. Yeah. 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 Uh, so he showed the video of, uh, him doing that with the fans when I think it was, uh, when we played, uh, sorry, they played Leon away, yeah. uh, in Europa league. Uh, so yeah, that was awesome to see. And, you know, hopefully I can get a video of me doing that sometime. <laughs> you sure will get ready for the 20th <laughs> of uh, February. Yeah. I'm working hard to get there. Uh, Joe, if if you can tell us a little bit about yourself as not only the football player, uh, Joe Bell, but also the the human being. Um, yeah. What are like your sure. what qualities do you uh, do you like in in uh, as a person? And yeah, you know what I mean. What do you? Uh, you mean qualities of myself or like yeah. hobbies that I like to do? Both. 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 Oh, okay qualities about myself that's a t that's a tough one um i care a lot about uh my connection with my family um obviously it's difficult when they're on the other side of the world uh, and it's something that i've been through for you know yeah five years since i've been away from them um so it matters it matters a lot to me uh you know keeping a strong connection with them and you know seeing them as much as i can uh, and also my friends um hmm. I don't. Know. <laughs> I try be humble, <laughs> so I'm struggling to think of more qualities. Uh, That's a quality, to, maybe in itself. Yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it is. But yeah, you know, I try to. I care a lot about my football. Um, so of course there is a Joe outside football, but you know, football takes so much of my life, and I work hard to achieve the goals that I want to achieve. Um, and I think when you've sacrificed so much to you know, get opportunities such as these, uh, you want to take them um, because, yeah, there's been a lot of hard work and sacrifices to get here. Um, and I don't want to be one to, you know, let those opportunities slip up. Um, in terms of hobbies, uh, from New Zealand, I think you definitely grow up uh, in the outdoors. Uh, so I love surfing. I love snowboarding. Um, it's probably a little bit too adventurous. Uh to promote i don't want to get i don't want to get injured or anything uh so it's a little bit more relaxed than it used to be uh but they're definitely my two favorite things to do so if it's not football it's always something active but uh, on the on this uh, training camp um, you're very active during all the trainings that you have but if you have to go to the room and watch uh, netflix or hbo what do you put on right now <laughs> wow uh i think my favorite show is uh rick and morty All right. <laughs> Are you aware? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that's uh, that's my favorite one. <laughs> All right. But Joe, one of the first things uh, that we do when Brian B sign a new player is um, okay. go on to Instagram and say, mm, there's the guy. Yeah, He's okay. Well. Yeah, there's many two bells, but not you. Yeah, good luck trying to find me on there. No, I'm, I'm not big on the social media stuff. Uh And, you know, to be honest, haven't really been for yeah, forever, kind of. Uh, I try keep a stronger connection with the people closest to me. Um, and I know everyone likes seeing photos, but I'm sure there's plenty of photos out there. <laughs> uh, 
but yeah yeah i don't think you're gonna find me on there nope but um maybe you should make a sneak profile and watch some of the praise that the Bremen fans will are giving you okay. already because they're very yeah, happy okay. that you came to the club okay no that's awesome here and you know as i said many times i'm just so excited to be here Great. And Joe, thanks for uh, your debut on uh, this fan podcast, uh, Brøndby Lød. Can you say Brøndby Lød? Brøndby Lød. Okay, that's very good. I can hear you yeah? used to okay, nice. Very good. Yeah, yeah. I hear better than I speak. But can I maybe get you to say, I'm Joe Bell and you're listening to Brøndby Lød? Sure. Hi guys, I'm Joe Bell and you're listening to Brøndby Lød. Wow, that's awesome. Thanks, Joe, <laughs> and thanks for being on the show. I'll just uh, no problem. change quickly to Danish to uh, wrap this uh, thing up. So Sounds tak good. til alle jer derude, som har lyttet med. Tak til vores hovedpartner Arbejdernes Landsbank og til vores partner Glostrup Shopping Center og storedrenge.dk Husk, at der er meget mere Brøndby der, hvor du uh, lytter med normalt. Og hvis du finder 3.dk på YouTube, så ligger der også en masse videoer der, blandt andet nogle af de videoer, som Joe talte om med Henrik Hekheims Fenerbahce. Så tak fordi I lyttede med på Genhør.